All right, let's talk about fountain pens, more specifically, the Pilot Prera. I'll talk about the body, the nib, what I like about it, and what I don't like about it. So this is a Pilot Prera. It comes in multiple colors, but this one is the one that I see most often in stores. It's the demonstrator pen with a clear body, which allows you to see the converter as well as the feed. Um, this one has a medium nib, and I'll get onto the nib further on, but I just want to say that this pen has been pretty good and has managed to be my everyday carry pen for the past year, and that means I have used this pen quite a lot, so I'm, I should know what I'm talking about when I talk about this pen, and... Considering how much I paid for it, this has been probably one of the best pens that I have. It originally cost me $50 in the store, and I know that seems a lot, but they remind you I live in Australia, so it's 50 Australian dollars. I've seen it in America for about 38 US dollars. So it's about the same price as a Lamy Safari, and I do have a Lamy Safari, and I will tell you that this is a much better choice um, in my opinion, then allow me Safari. So when you buy this pen, it will come with two um, Pilot uh, proprietary um, ink cartridges. I think they're both black. As well as that, it will also come with the Pilot Con 50 converter. But for this pen, I have switched that out for a one of the squeeze converters. And I've done that because the Con 50 on my Pilot 78G um, started leaking, so I had to switch it over. And this one that I got with a Pilot Metropolitan, this one has served it right, so yeah. So going through the pen specs, Capped, this is a really short pen at only 12 centimeters. When it's posted, it will boost it up to about 13.4 centimeters, and uncapped, it will only be about 10.4 centimeters. So this is a really short pen, and I would only recommend writing with it if you post it. But I will say that when you post it, it does become a pretty comfortable pen, because the diameter of the grip is 10 millimeters, and which means it holds in your hand really, really well. And if you do choose to do it uncapped, yes, it will fit in your hand, but I must warn you, this is a very light pen. It only weighs 17 grams with the cap on, so much less than that, maybe about 10 grams with the cap off. So I would really recommend that you do write with this with the cap posted. Um, Something that I would like to mention is that this is an all plastic grip. It is an acrylic uh, pen, so if you have very oily hands or are using this for quite a while, this grip here, like a lot of fountain pens, can get very, very um, slippery because it will tend to attract the oils on your fingers, and I have pretty oily fingers, so just a word of warning. But I did say that this is an acrylic pen and acrylic is a pretty durable plastic and this has been an everyday carry pen for a year. It's been inside of my blazer pocket, it's been inside of my pants, um, you know, and I have keys, wallet, coins, um, it's been in the back of my bag and from what I can see there are very few scratches, the only scratches that there are um, they're very, very small, and as far as I can tell, there aren't any big ones. And from a distance, you will not notice any scratches, um, and it won't make the pen ugly because it is a clear see-through pen. Um, and I have other clear pens, no, not anymore. Yes, I have a Lamy Safari Clear, and that does tend to pick up scratches. Sometimes which is odd because they're the same material, but that pen has a few scratches on it and because it is a clear pen, it is pretty ugly. And on the point of it being an acrylic pen, 
you can make this pen an eyedropper, and I have done so before. Um, all you have to do is find an o-ring and put some silicon grease on the threads because it is it does have plastic threads and it has about half a centimeter of threads so this one did eye drop perfectly without any issue um, as well as that something that's a nice feature as I mentioned before you can see the feed um, because that is a clear section um, and I find this pretty useful when um, I'm writing so usually I'll be able to look over and see if the ink is drying out in the feed and if needed I'll just unscrew it like that and just apply a bit more ink but only if I need to and that's only with certain inks such as um, Parker Quink or um, maybe some Waterman inks So onto the topic of the nib. This is a pretty typical pilot nib. It's a stainless steel nib, and this one that I have is a medium nib, which is more of a European fine, for those of you who use European nibs. Um, this nib is very easy to take out of the pen. All you have to do is grip onto it and just pull, and it will pull out, comes out, there's a nib and there is the feed and you just put it back and you push it back in um this nib thankfully can be interchanged with other pilot nibs i have a pilot 78g here um this one has a fine nib you can take this one out and i have done on several occasions taken it out and replaced it with this nib um as well as that you can also swap it back which is pretty pretty fun actually um, but I must say that this nib is really, really smooth. Like a lot of Japanese, um, well, pilot nibs in general, um, their medium nibs are incredibly smooth for cheap pens. Like, this is a $50 pen. For, for a cheap pen, that's not a broad. Um, it is very, very smooth. And, um... I gotta say, I have had some issues with pilot nibs before, but this one is great. So hopefully if you get one of these pens, it will be smooth. Um, on the issue of flex, this nib does have a fair bit of flex to it. When you push it down, um, it will tend to flex with very little pressure. But that being said, there's not much, there's not much line variation what will generally happen is the nib will flex up, but the tines won't spread outwards, if you get what I mean. So yes, there is um, quite a bit of flex to it, which will help um, in relieving the pressure off your wrist, but there's not gonna be much line variation, and that is to be expected with these cheaper Pilot um, nibs. Um, in terms of um, the wetness of the feed. It's a typical um, pilot, so it's not going to run dry, but it's not going to be really, really, really wet. I did notice that this pen is a lot wetter when I changed from the Con 50 converter to um, this squeeze converter, but the difference was pretty minimal. This is a pretty good feed, and it will never dry start on you in in the whole year that I've been using it, it has not dry started on me, um, which makes it one of the most reliable pens that I have. Um, so it won't dry and yeah, which is pretty pretty fun because sometimes I'll, I won't use this pen for a day or so and sometimes I'll take it into class and I'll just need it all of a sudden and this pen will work every single time. So what do I like about this pen? I like that it has a really, really smooth nib to it, especially out of the box. And considering the price that I paid for it, I think that the nib is one of the better nibs. In fact, this is outperforming some of my more expensive um, Parker 51, Parker Sonnet, uh, Parker Sonnet pens. So for a pen that costs about a third of the price, this is pretty good. Um, I also like how it is being one of the most reliable pens that I've 
that I own um, it's had no issues over the past year um, no dry starts it doesn't run dry when I use it which means that I can use it for ages and when you eye drop of this pen like any other pen it will last for me almost a month it will, it will, it will last upwards of two to three weeks and I use this pen usually every single day well I use fountain pens every day and I probably use this pen a lot so when I eye drop of this pen um, it really really will last you that long but I like to change out my inks all the time so I just leave it with this squeeze converter it's also nice that it is durable it's yeah well no scratches no nothing considering how poorly I treat this specific pen um, it's lasted quite a long time and I was just saying for the price that I'll pay for it if it does break or crack I'd have no issue buying another one so things that I don't like about this one I think it is a bit annoying that this grip does tend to get uh, slippery over time um, that's prevalent in a lot of pens that have this material grip um, so I can't hold it against this pen specifically just for a lot of pens that have this plasticky grip it will get really slippery when I write it right using an <laughs> when I use this for an essay or something yes this will get a bit painful to use and then I'll probably just you know have to wipe it or something as well as that this is an incredibly light pen and I wish there was a bit more weight to it yes the you know this clip which is it's a, it's a pretty tight clip um it does add well it'll add minimal weight to it but this is a stupidly light pen 17 grams in total so i do wish that it was a tiny bit heavier as well as that i wish the pen could be a little bit bigger but you know putting this in a suit pocket or wherever it does make sense um, if you aren't using this pen all the time. Um, as well as that, the only real complaint that I actually have that I can tie it to this pen is when you um, put the cap on, it will create a nice little vacuum seal like that between the nib and well, the outside. So that's nice when you're, say, going on an aeroplane or anything because it will be a nice vacuum seal but when you yank the pen from the cap it does tend to draw some of the ink from the nib and just sort of squirt it down the end of the cap now I have cleaned the cap out for this video but it does tend to um, ink up the cap of the pen within say about a week or two and usually by that by the end of that time period um, when you take the cap of the pen there will usually be quite a lot of ink all the way down here which yeah you get inky fingers every fountain pen user is used to that so do I recommend this pen Yes, it's, a, it's an amazing everyday carry pen for the price. Um, if I would put this up against a Twisby Echo, I would choose this pen. It's just been more reliable than a lot of the Echoes have been reported to be. I know Twisby have some quality control issues and I have seen a few of them um, crack. I believe some of them crack um, where the threads are. This one's just been so reliable for me, so I would rather this, and I would much rather this compared to a Metro. Thanks for watching.